Uh, first, let's talk about this race. Obviously, your campaign felt good going into it. A lot stronger ground game. What do you think happened tonight? Was it was it all money, or were there other factors here? Oh no, it was all money. Almost three million dollars coming in the last two weeks. They know that we were winning this race. We had an incredibly strong ground game. We did field first. We've been knocking doors since February. Commercials, they outpaced us 50 to 1 because I did not have the same level of resources that I had last time. We had a team that was different in many ways, and we went hard into the field, but we couldn't combat the onslaught of negative ads 50 to 1. So what we believe happened is that we had our voters out there but, you know, some of them may have been turned off a little bit by, you know, the negative ad. I mean, they pummeled me with negative ads just like they did last time. I am convinced that they would not have come in here. President Biden wouldn't have endorsed. The neoliberal would not have come in here. They knew that we were winning this race and they called in a 911. Biden didn't endorse only endorsed one other candidate other than Chantel Brown. The entire country in a safe district. So it just really tells our movement, and my message right now is to the movement. The, the freedom fighting movement, we got to take the gloves all the way off. Let's talk about the gloves all the way off. You mentioned Pinos, P-I-N-O, progressives and names only. Uh, let's keep it real, the squad did not come in here for you. AOC came in five minutes before. Uh, you know, they, they had their reasons. We can't endorse an incumbent. Uh, who are the Pinos? Uh, and did, did the squad and the broader progressive movement let you down? I don't, want, I don't want to get into the squad, okay? Some of those women are my friends. Um, some people were threatened. Threatened? Were threatened. By who? And, you know, I don't want to get into the threats, but they were threatened. So, you know, look, I want to lead them to the side. I will say that the Congressional Progressive Caucus was wrong. They were wrong, and I was really glad to see Congresswoman Jaya Paul in the Punch Bowl article kind of allude to they need to change their the way that they do this. That came from the pressure of the movement itself. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been noticed. I mean, she did mention, you know, the crypto billionaire coming in and that kind of thing, and maybe that's not the way we should endorse. The Progressive Caucus has got to show that they are different than the Blue Dog Caucus, because if they're not, then they might as well just go ahead and unite with them. So I don't want to put this on, let me say this to the movement. The movement has got to understand that the neoliberal types are not playing with us, so we can't play with them. That's it. And we got to be disciplined, we got to be united, and we cannot get off focus. Because the things that this movement is fighting for, Jordan, are beautiful for all people. But we need more discipline, and we can't play games. And so I am committed to going all across this country and making sure that we get that message. And for those in the wealthier class that do support this movement, who do know that something is wrong with the system, we need them to bring it on in here in terms of making investments so that this kind of stuff doesn't happen again. I said that last year, right? It happened again because they fear me. I mean, it's just obvious. I mean, it's obvious. It's crystal clear. This black woman from Cleveland, $3 million, two weeks left in the campaign. And everybody and their mamas and their mama mama came up in here. But it's okay. When I tell you that my resolve, I, yeah, my resolve is strong. Am I dreaming or did you just announce a run for president? Well, I said uh, 2024, here we come. So I'm going to leave that for other people's imagination. But I said California got something to say about this. Iowa got something to say about this. Nevada got something to say about this. Well, let me ask you, would you consider running as an independent rather than a, in the Democratic primary if you ran? I would consider that. Absolutely, I would. All, all options are on the table. Because you know a lot of people thought Bernie should have ran as an independent, or at least when he lost in the Democratic primary, run as an independent. Uh, a lot of people feel 
the Democratic Party is where ambition goes to die, and we just saw a poll uh, where 58% of the country said they would they would vote for an independent. I mean, the majority of, even Cuyahoga County, the majority of the voters identify as independent voters. Now, independent voters lean some way. You know, and the two-party system has it, they got, they got it on lock. What we have to begin to do is awaken the sleeping giants, and that's exactly what I plan to do. And my last question, you already get, you mentioned the pundits are going to talk and everything like that. If you run, the media is going to say, two-time loser, agitator, divisive, well, whatever. How, what would be your... I remember the current president now ran three times. Good comeback. And can I just ask you from a, a spiritual point? I'm going to be honest, you obviously were a little more muted running these last two times than you were on the campaign trail for Bernie. And the fire came out in that speech. I think what a lot of people wanted to hear from you during this campaign was that. Can you kind of talk about, did you feel you couldn't be that no, way? I wasn't, I wasn't muted, especially this time around. I was not muted at all. You know, I've, I've been out there saying the things that need to be said. I talked about this seat not being for sale. That's calling out the person that's in the seat. I called out the billionaire class and the millionaire class that came in here to taint and dilute the will of the everyday people. I talked about what the vision is for this, for my district and for this country. So I called out the folks and that's what they don't like. So no, not muted at all. This is me and my affect comes in different forms. You know, sometimes I am gonna be as fiery as I was tonight and sometimes I'm gonna be just as cool and calm and collected as I'm talking to you tonight. But nobody in this movement should doubt where I stand in terms of fighting for the things that people deserve in this country. And my last question, I promise my last question. What do you say to people watching that are just fucking fed up? They've, we've, they rode the Bernie wave, you were out there. They're hopeless, they're working three jobs, inflation, uh, they still haven't recovered financially or health-wise from COVID. Yeah. And they just can't take any more defeat and they feel like checking out. What do you say they, to them? They can't check out because that's what people, that's what the status quo, that's what the corporatists want them to do. They want them to check out. I was serious when I said this. Cleveland was the station of hope on the Underground Railroad. We have, hope is an action word. You can't check out because if you check out, then they automatically win. They being the corporate interests that can buy and bribe politicians, the corporate interests that have a lock hold on what we get and what we don't get. If you check out, then you make their job easier. So we can't check out, we gotta fight. Now you can be disappointed, you can be mad, but what you cannot do is check out because they automatically win if we do that. Now would you run against Biden in a primary if he still ran? 2024 is gonna take care of itself. What I'm saying to the people. Don't be coy. Would you would you run against him? 2024 is gonna take care of itself. What I am saying to the people. I, I was very clear up there. Said 2024 here we come. Well, I guess I'll see you in Iowa. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Good luck. Thanks for watching, and make sure to tune in to Status Quo's daily live stream Monday through Thursday at five o'clock Eastern time, and Fridays at four o'clock Eastern time.